Okay, let me start off with a quick story about a couple I knew. Um, we'll call one the prince, the other princess. And they met in high school, and it looked like a relationship made in heaven, but was a disaster in a sense, and ended quite shocking. So here we go. So once upon a time, there was a prince and a princess. They met in high school, high school sweethearts, and they were inseparable. They did everything together. And in fact, when they transferred to university, they made sure to transfer to the same university. After they graduated university, same concept. They went to the city to start their careers in the same place. So they, in other words, they're sacrificing so much for the relationship so that they could stay together. Well, that's, that's a good thing, right? But something's wrong here. Something's seriously wrong with the relationship. Neither one knows that they don't love each other. If they both don't love each other, then why are they staying together, you might wonder. So here comes shocking part number one. So after their engagement, the prince confronted the princess and said, I'm bisexual. Okay, well, that's, that's shocking enough, right? But here comes shocking part number two. Her response was, I'm gay. So the entire time they were together, one was bi, one was gay. It was destined that they're not going to be together, but yet they were together. They were sacrificing so much for each other. So you might wonder, why in the world would they sacrifice so much for each other to stay together when they don't love each other? Well, see it this way. They're on a play, and there's audience, and they want to please the audience in their play. And they didn't want to play parts no more. So the prince and princess took their bow of the last part of the play and exit scene. So I think society shapes us and makes us do the darnest things. I'm not saying that they're, they both made terrible choices because of fear. That's what really drove them to be in the situation they were. Um, I think it's awful. So you might wonder whatever happened to the prince and the princess. So the princess lived happily ever after. She found someone in Canada, married her, and they have kids. Wonderful. So what about the prince? Well, not everything lives happily ever after, at least in the short term. He got into some drugs and stuff like that, and he chose a very different path afterwards. So I can't necessarily pin his behavior on his sexual orientation, but I can't help wonder what drove him to that point to that and I still personally feel like it is something with a sexual orientation which made him push him in such a bad direction like a self-hatred or fear or whatever it is so and this unfortunate incident with the prince is a great segue to discussing bisexuality and how I feel like it kind of sucks in a way and actually I think it does suck and let me explain. So the very first thing about bisexuality is it's misunderstood, at least the definition of it's misunderstood. It's uh, bisexuality means something different to every bisexual person. They're going to tell you something a little bit differently, what it means to them. And for me, it, it means that um, I'm not attracted to both gender simultaneously. It not normally works that way. Sometimes it does. You know, but but often I'm either one way or the other, and I tend to shift more towards one side than the other. Um, sometimes it gets a little confusing where they crisscross as far as like I'm somewhere in the middle, and that can be confusing. So in other words, I'm very fluid. I'm not constant. But then you can ask someone else, and they're going to say, oh, I'm right smack dab in the middle. I like both. And some says, well, I drift more this way. I'm, I'm always the same. But so what I'm trying to get to, some people are fluid, some people are not. But some people are both, and they're a little more complicated. So they may say, I'm emotionally attracted to one gender, and I'm physically attracted to the other gender. There you go. So the definition is often misunderstood. The other thing I don't like is the unacceptance of both sides, straight or gay, of bisexuality. And I think it's almost like uh, shunned, in a sense. So for example... I could be going on a date with a person and I tell them I'm bisexual and that's a deal breaker for a lot. They don't even want to deal with it. I think it's because it opens up too many doors and creates too much complications in a relationship and case case point, um, 
they might think I might start dating him for a few months and then say, hey, I need to, I need my other sexual needs from the other gender. Like I said, I'm fluid. So that might change. And that's what creates a problem. And I will, I probably will never have a stable relationship because of my fluidity. And I think that's why I am where I am today is because I'm not always 100% locked in one side. I wish I was, but I'm not. But um, I think that people are not not willing to give me a chance. And I hate to say this, but there is some truth to it. Um, but anyway, um, I, I don't like that. And I feel like, so the relationship thing kind of sucks. Okay, I'm, I've, I could really do a whole series of videos on relationships and bisexuality, but I'm only going to kind of talk a little bit from my perspective on this and just move on. So moving on. Um, the only, the one thing I don't like is how, um, people don't treat bisexuality like it's something real. And I've heard this from gay men or straight, I've heard this from gay people, straight people, whatever. And, um, they said, oh, bisexuality isn't real. It's just a repressed gay person that hasn't fully come out and accepted who they are. While there is truth to that, there definitely is truth to that. That doesn't apply to everybody. Some people are just free flowing and open and stuff like that by nature sexually. And they're not confined to one gender. And I don't know why people can't see it that way. And going back to where there is truth, there is some people that are very repressed and they're not ready to come out hundred percent as gay and they want to slowly work their way to there. And I think that is perfectly fine and no one should ever shun someone for that. It's perfectly fine if they want to slowly come out of the closet and accept themselves. There are people also that, you know, when they were younger, they were 100% straight. And then as they've gotten older and older, they're just 100% gay. They're no longer interested in, in straight. And does that make them bisexual? I would say no, because um, they shifted to being a gay, gay person, and that's fine. So, but they may have at one point identified as bisexual. And I think that's what confuses a lot of people is, well, you you were bisexual when you were uh, 19 and now you're gay at 30. Oh, you've always been gay. No, that's not always the case. So uh, I think people really need to take a step back and really, really listen to bisexual people, listen to their stories and stuff like that and quit, you know, quit saying these things and quit judging people, you know. It's very hard. It's a struggle that that every bi gay people should know of all people of, of what a struggle it is. And there is statistics on bisexual people, and they're not very good mental on the mental health level, um, income level. It it doesn't look good for us. So don't put gas on the fire. That's all I ask. Anyway, so. That's it. I'm done. <laughs> I get very emotional on this. I do apologize, but I, I'm, I get very excited about the topic and subject of it. But at the same time, I get aggravated because a lot of these memories resurface. So I do apologize for that. Anyway, so that concludes my video. Um, feel free to check out other videos, subscribe, click that bell, whatever. whatever. Um, but until next time, I will talk to you guys later. All right, bye.